This is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoint. Now, your host, James Just. Thank you for joining us today. With me is John Cameron and Mr. Richard Field. Gentlemen, we've had a, a bit of Bitcoin controversy going on this, this last week. Um, Elon Musk and, oh, what, what, the banking industry, I suppose, are arguing over the, what, the uh, well, environmental impact of Dodge of Bitcoin, which is kind of a strange argument to have. What do you think it's about not, this? Program? It's not so much well, it's the banking industry, but it's it's more the establishment and more the government itself. The government is scared stiff about the ascendance of Bitcoin. Uh, the reason they're scared stiff is because government control of fiat currency is ninety percent of what allows them to control everything else. Governments don't want to give up control, therefore they don't want to give up control of the currency, namely the dollar in the U.S., the euro in, in, in Europe, and the, the yuan in, in China, and so on. No country will willingly and without a fight give up control of the currency. It's that important to them. It allows them to inflate uh, as much as they want uh, as a stealth way of, ra of essentially raising taxes. So it's it's very, very important uh, and uh, to governments. To, to stop down not only Bitcoin, but also gold or any other any other uh, uh, commodity or uh, thing that would be a replacement for fiat currency. Uh, the first thing that the government did to uh, stop down on Bitcoin was claim it's only used in crime, only used uh, for uh, laundering funds, etc. Uh, that was goofy and wrong. I mean, it is used for that, but so is cash. Cash is used a hell of a lot more than Bitcoin uh, in, uh -huh. a, in a legal, <laughs> in a legal uh, uh, for, for money laundering. And, of course, government wants to get rid of cash, too, but that's another okay. story. I was, was going to talk about that, the, the government's uh, but, idea of getting rid of, of cash so that, uh, you know, every single transaction, as long as they can keep it in dollars and not Bitcoin or Doge or yeah. the rest of that, yeah. uh, appears uh, in somebody's bank account and can be tracked and, therefore, they can tax it more easily. So... I think we're 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 that, just seeing this. Yeah, that's a, that's a different that's a different rabbit hole, but a very legitimate one. Uh, so the second thing that you know, but Bitcoin kept going up. All of the scare stories about Bitcoin being a, a mafia tool or whatever, Bitcoin has continued to go up, up and got you know above sixty thousand dollars per per coin recently. Uh, so now the next scare story, and this has been circulating on the on the interwebs for about I don't know, a month or two is that, oh, Bitcoin uses all kinds of energy in the mining process. It uses more energy than the country of Sweden. My God, we have to stop Bitcoin because it's an energy waster. Uh, it'll, uh, you know, pollute the uh, atmosphere with greenhouse gas, et cetera, et cetera. And nobody actually sat down to do the comparison of what the banks do in terms of energy consumption and what, for that matter, gold does in terms of energy consumption until recently when somebody did a little bit of rudimentary research and found out that banks, the banking system, uses 536 times more energy than, mine, than Bitcoin mining. Even gold, gold mining, uses 141 times more energy than Bitcoin mining. And if you want to translate, translate that into uh, greenhouse gases, Banks uh, contribute 471 times more to greenhouse gases than does Bitcoin, and um, gold mining contributes 107 times more uh, more to greenhouse gases than does Bitcoin. So it's another red flag. The uh, the powers that be. I mean, we're already in a, uh, a a point in history where the dollar is about to lose its supremacy based on historical precedents. Uh, it, it takes about 50 years for a fiat currency to run the the uh, course from being uh, the new the new uh, accepted international currency to being uh, inflated to oblivion. Uh, we saw that with the, the British pound. We saw that with uh, uh, in historical times with the uh, the Roman uh, uh, coins, uh, silver coins. We saw that with uh, uh, the Netherlands. We saw that with uh, Spanish gold when gold was being mined in the New World and Spain. Uh, inflated their money supply by having ready access to gold. There's 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 a there's an historical cycle. The currencies never last all that long. Go, um, the dollar's time is essentially up, uh, and the United States government is trying to delay or, or trying to whistle past the graveyard 
uh, against dollar supremacy as long as they possibly can. Don't scare stories about it, about it using too much energy or just that. Just just that. Scare stories and nothing more. Well, and then to, to add to what Richard said, uh, well, there's a couple, a couple of facts that there's only, what, about one-eighth of the total uh, Bitcoins of, uh, possible left to be mined. So once those are mined, its energy usage will be simply transactional costs, which will put it on the order of, uh, uh, you know, lows or uh, maybe less than Home Depot. You know, so it's a problem that will go away, whereas the energy use of, of banks, uh, especially as they, you know, print uh, spurious phony reports on, on how solid they are based upon holding um, fiat currency, uh, you know, it will continue. So, you know, even if it even if it is, uh, and it's my understanding that that what is it, about half the energy used by Bitcoin people, because they're all techies, they're concerned about uh, the environment and they're starting to use solar and wind and all sorts of stuff to, to, uh, to uh, power the, the mining. So it's kind of a moot point. I mean, if, if you, if you look well, at electricity it. Electricity costs money and yeah. all those, all those mining equipments, you know, it costs a lot to run. So if they're running the most, they're going to run the most, uh, energy efficient cards and energy efficient mm -hmm. equipment they can it's simply yeah yeah and they're and they're it's the bitcoin industry not the not the banking industry that is uh, going to uh, places like denmark to use geothermal energy which mm -hmm. is essentially cost free it's the uh, bitcoin industry that's going to or miners that are going to uh you using a, a flare off from wasted gas uh, you know uh in oil fields in North Dakota and Texas and elsewhere, gas is often flared off because it's not in, it's not economic to uh, to use it, you know, to, to transport it to market. There 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 are companies right now specializing in taking that otherwise to be flared off natural gas and using it to power Bitcoin mining. There's a whole uh, sub industry in, involved in figuring out how to mine uh, Bitcoin a lot more inexpensively than uh, is currently the case. You can't say that about Goldman Sachs or about uh, uh, about J.P. Morgan Chase. Now, the most they do is send their workers to work from home. I think that's about the most they do to, to, to save some energy. We'll send the workers home to save some energy. So, well, let's move on about something else that's about kind of strange ongoings this last week. The Pentagon has released more videos and more discussions about UFOs. I know, John, you spent some time down the UFO rabbit hole apparently this weekend. Well, no, it was, uh, it was today, unfortunately, because I, I, um, I clicked on, uh, you know, I don't know if people know, want to know how the show works. We, we exchange links so we can do some research on stuff. And, uh, you know, the UFOs were in, in the 40s and 50s, about half the people in the country publicly and without shame believed that UFOs were real. Uh, they didn't know what they were, but but there were so many sightings by by so many reputable people, fighter pilots coming back from World War II, um, scientists, all the rest of that, that it was pretty much an accepted fact that that UFOs existed and somebody was looking into them. And then the the government decided, our government, the government, uh, and other governments decided that uh, you know the idea, especially our government, that that the people of America at the height of the Cold War. Um, wouldn't have confidence in this country if if the the government uh, couldn't have a very clear explanation about what these things were. So they they put a policy in place to ridicule uh, people for these sightings and you know forced pilots to stop reporting them and on and on and on. At the same time, creating some uh, uh, an official government program a little bit later, the blue book whose job was not to find out about UFOs, but to make sure that nobody who spotted something reputable actually, uh, that they were ridiculed. And, you know, it, it's, uh, it's gotten to the point where um, the, 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 the Soviet Union and uh, a bunch of other countries opened up all of their information on UFOs quite a while ago. Uh, all of their stuff is open. And despite 
people, even senators, uh, people, assistant uh, directors of defense and all the rest of that saying, I want to look at all the information that the United States government has on UFOs. Um, they can't look at it, which is kind of strange. So now the Pentagon says it's going to release all the information it has at, at, at a date in the future. Um, but they've said they're going to do this over and over and over again and never have. So it either, one of the, there's a bunch of possible explanations. Of Occam's razor, if you know the government, is that they don't really want people to know how incompetent that they are and see all the money they've wasted on all these uh, basically propaganda programs. But the second uh, reason is that there's something there. And, um, you know, whether it's, you know, aliens or whatever, but there's, there have been so many reputable sightings by people over the years that um, I would think it would behoove any government that's interested in uh, protecting its people or any major think tank to think, well, um, if these phenomena can show up on radar and do these things, then it means that we might be able to figure out how to, out how to do that. So why don't we investigate them so we can reverse engineer what they're doing to have interstellar flight or to fly to the moon or whatever. So, um, and then my while I'm on the soapbox, um, the other part to this is that my, my brother, the brilliant very quietly spoken man that he is when I was discussing some what I thought was a uh, government conspiracy a while back. He said, John, 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 um, think about this. Uh, you met people who work for the government, right? And I said, yeah, I didn't quite know where he was going. He said, so do you think any of them can keep a blanking secret? And my answer to that was no. So I'm, I'm torn. Um, and, and, you know, part of me thinks that the, there's been so much information reported that there's obviously something there. And the other part of me thinks that, that the government can possibly keep a secret. And then I came to a, a, another conclusion that um, it actually sort of makes sense, which is government is just so bad and inept and compartmentalized and uh, favor ridden and corrupt and all the rest of that, ours especially. We're making, you know, Central African dictatorships look like uh, open countries that they're probably something there, but the people in charge of it have no idea where it is. Uh, and uh, that's why when people ask, can I look at your files? They go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they don't produce them, not because they don't want to produce them, but because they lost them because uh, they work for the government. <laughs> I mean, anybody who thinks I'm wrong about that, just file for unemployment in the state of California. <laughs> it's in some box in some warehouse somewhere, and nobody knows where it yeah, is anymore. It's weird. Yeah. Or, or if there's an actual alien, uh, you know, member of Congress, and nobody knows because all those guys are too drunk and trying to get set up with hookers all the time, so they don't even bother to look. I mean, it's just you know, who knows? But I think I, you know, it, it, to talk myself in a complete circle, uh, I don't know if there's anything there, but all the reports would would lead uh, me to think that somebody should investigate it objectively to see if they can't, if there is anything there. It might not be UFOs. It might be transdimensional stuff. Most of the, 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 the universe is dark matter. We know nothing about that. Maybe that's dark matter sliding through. I mean, who knows what it is? But if we're wasting it, we're wasting the kind of money we're wasting paying people more money to sit at home so the government can remain in power than they would get if they actually went back to work. Let's just take a fraction of that and investigate all this stuff, see if there's anything there. My, my, my two cents worth is on UFOs is this. If we think, given the vastness of the universe, that humans are the only species which has uh, developed any kind of intelligence or method of travel uh, or, or any of that, then that's the ultimate of hubris. Mm -hmm. I suspect very strongly that there is something out there that we don't know about that may have uh, superior superior intelligence to what we do, but there's no way of knowing uh, unless they identify themselves to us, and they may not think it's worth the trouble. Thank you. Or, or we might even not see it as, as being worth it. And I, I'll, I'll second what Richard said. I mean, when everybody says UFOs, they always think aliens. 
but that it doesn't necessarily have to mean aliens. That's a whole different discussion. There, all the, you know, when when the big thinkers, the the numbers people, you know, astrophysicists and scientists who observe the universe, look at our planet and the planets they've recently discovered that are in the Goldilocks zone, and you know, they come up with a number of of civilizations, uh, a number of planets supporting life. Uh, in our galaxy alone at the most pessimistic upwards of a million. And you, if you think that, you know, if you it just crunch the numbers down, 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 um, there, there's no way that we are alone, as Richard said, in this universe. You know, whether, uh, and people say, well, they couldn't get to us, could it take a thousand years? Back in 1999, physicists have, proven the impossible that it is faster it is possible for things to travel faster than the speed of light and anybody who's watched stargate universe knows you don't need a spaceship to get around anyway so, yeah. <laughs> well you know yeah these things they're not necessarily aliens i still bet the fact that this is some government program that you know the military doesn't actually know about and so the military sees these things flying around what they're seeing is some secret government you know program building ships that can go in the ocean and the sky it's just you know it seems to be the most logical answer to me hmm. but speaking of logic washington post has now pointed out that our politics is not as divisive now as it has always been despite the fact that they've been telling us that for the last four years it's they're pointing out that you know in the past our politics has been just as divisive as they are now we're just as mean to each other as we were before and it's all fine it's yeah, well, it's, it's not, it's not, that's not as far fresh as it seems. I mean, back in the 19th century, there were, uh, uh, there were people who were having fisticuffs on the floor of the, uh, in the Senate of the House, I forget which. Uh, Alexander I Hamilton, see that. Alexander I see Hamilton, uh, and, uh, you know, killed somebody in a duel. Aaron uh, Burr. You know, the, Alec, yeah, Aaron Burr, Burr, yeah. You know, it's the, the, uh, the, the, the revolutionary, the, the post-revolutionary war uh, politics were ever, ever bit, every bit as, uh, as uh, dicey and uh, mean-spirited and uh, hard-hitting as anything we have today. Uh, I think the one thing that is different about today's politics is that it's turned into uh, a, a winner-take-all. We have grown the government to such a great extent that the government has so much pervasive uh, control over the wealth of the country that if you have control of the government, you have control of the wealth and everybody is fighting for for that control. Mm -hmm. That's why we're seeing such uh, such dramatic uh, us versus them. Why there is no bipartisanship to speak of anymore? It's because everybody everybody wants to be the one who controls the gravy train. Well, and and to add on, I didn't interrupt you, did I, Richard? To to <laughs> add on to that, the 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 growth in you know I I don't want to scare people away by calling it a deep state. The untouchable bureaucracies uh, that are a result of the growth in government um, have power that is is um, that kings of ancient countries would want to have. You know, they're untouchable due to qualified immunity and all the rest of the can't that you can't fire the people, and they pretty much control um, all of that wealth that that passes through their fingers, and so. Um, when you have one of the major players, because you basically have three three parties, and they're all the same. You have Republicans, Democrats, and the bureaucracies. And I think the bureaucracies actually have more power than either the Republicans or Democrats, or both of them combined. And and because that part of the world is untouchable, uh, you have to focus on these little shouting matches that you have between the the parties that are, you know, pretend like they're different, but they're not. And, and I think that, that people uh, have gotten to the point where they, they believe that there is no way to change that. There's a huge level of frustration in this country over the power that all these agencies have over their lives. Um, and if you believe that you are powerless, that's when you are most frustrated in life. And when you're most frustrated in life, that's when you get the angriest. So I, I think there's that an added player that has more power than than um, especially in the past. I yeah, well, not said. necessarily then in the past. I mean, if you look at, uh, uh, at Kafka and the, uh, you know, the, uh, I forget what civilization that was, uh, it, but the bureaucracy ruled there. If you look at uh, uh, Rome, it was the bureaucracy mm -hmm. that, that controlled 
a whole lot of what was going on during the Roman Empire period. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you look at uh, anything, any country in Europe is the bureaucracy that uh, no, I, I has agree been that I, for a very I, long I, time. I, Bureau, yeah. bureaucra bureaucracies have a tendency to uh, predominate uh, in, in all phases of history after a, after a period of time. Well, and, and I absolutely agree with you, Richard, but now the bureaucracy controls 90% of the money because 90, I guess it's 90% passes through the government, all of it if you count the IRS. So, you know, in the past, uh, a, a, well, like in, like in Italy, uh, when I was there last century, I won't say when last century, um, there were, there were um, companies that employed a thousand people that weren't on the books anywhere because the, the, the bureaucracy was sort of Kafka-esque that people just decided not to deal with it. And, you know, that's why the underground economy is so huge because, you know, trying to get a permit to replace your water heater that you can do yourself, uh, but you'll go to jail if you do it and you're caught, is, is so Byzantine and bizarre and Kafka, throw all the verbiage at it. But because it's so omnipresent and controls so much wealth versus what it controlled in the past, in the past, you could kind of ignore it, but now it's omnipresent, and that's why it's frustrating. Well, I think that's part of the, the point is talk about something else. Yeah. Well, I think the government used to be so far away; it used to be a thousand miles away, a hundred miles away. It took months to get information, and now it's quite literally at your front door. Uh, you can't get no, away. It's, from in, it. it's inside my computer. I mean, it's just you know. Yeah, you, I mean, there's no way you, I, I do anything interesting enough to need them to be inside my computer. You can run, you yeah. can't hide, but you can't run fast enough. No. no yeah, which no. brings us back to AB5 is still continuing to wreak havoc on our economy, and they want to take it national with the PRO Act. Hmm. It's, you know, independent workers. At a time when workers have all the power, they have no flexibility because of California's AB5. Instead of wanting to say, hey, I want to work there on Tuesday or over there on Wednesday, and I want to make this decision every week. We have California who has decided that well, schedules have to be printed out two weeks in advance. And so you've taken actually taken the power away from the individual worker at a time when individual workers have more power than they've had in a long time. It's this whole Whatever. concept. Yeah. This whole concept that AB5 was protecting workers is just mind-boggling to me. Well, no, and, that, and well, that's – Go at, ahead, Richard. Take a look at any, at any bill, the title of the bill – is almost always the exact opposite of what the bill will actually accomplish. Mm -hmm. And so if it's uh, protect the workers bill, you can be uh, pretty well guaranteed that it's going to uh, screw the workers one way or another. Oh, absolutely. And, and uh, especially in this, the, the, the stated uh, goal of these things and the real goal of these, these things, or just like the, one of the tax entities in the state of California is called the Board of Equalization. And if you think about it, you know, the reason it's called the Board of Equalization is because uh, they want to flatten out wealth in the state, and they are actually ballsy enough, probably can't say that on the air, to call themselves what they are. They are to the take money from one pot and give it to another pot, scrub as much off as they can in the middle, and give it to their favorite friends. But most... Uh, most government organizations don't have that kind of courage. I mean, the, the war on drugs. I'm, I'm not sure it was courage. I suspect that was accidental. But Yeah, you think it was accidental? Well, yeah, because you're, then you'd be given a government employee credit for being intelligent. And there are some. I mean, the polit politicians, some of them are brilliant. But, uh, no, it's, it's a mess. And, and any time the government steps in, uh, or the governments, I think I should always say that, step in and try to fix something, you know, A, there's a hidden agenda, and B, they're going to screw it up worse than it already is, and C, we're going to be worse off after they supposedly try to fix it when they're actually trying to make it worse. And we're going to pay for it. When they start. And, and we're going to pay for it, and the people who are employed to do this new stuff are going to be employed forever, and retired rich, and there's no way to fire them. So it's it's a little frustrating, a little frustrating. Yeah. Yeah, it's, they interfere in a in a economy that they have no knowledge of. Mm. They tell people uh, who work on these businesses who have deliberately designed their lives to be freelancers, to be gig workers, because they don't want to be employees. They don't want to be tied down. And then you have a bunch of you know people with a union mindset, kind of a show up, clock in, punch your time, and go home. 
mindset, and they want to impose that on, on gig workers and freelancers who are completely different type of people. And why why our legislature isn't sophisticated enough to understand that you know, hey, we but have to. <laughs> We have so, so James, are we not going to talk about the Ministry of Truth? <clears throat> oh, you want to talk about YouTube's Ministry of Truth? No, no, no. I want to talk about a small subsidiary of one of the FANG stocks. That's what I want to talk about, uh, which has set itself up as the Ministry of Truth. Hey, well, sure thing. Okay. Go, Richard, go. Uh, the, the Ministry of Truth has told us uh, at varying times, back in March of last year, 2020, it said masks are not necessary. In April of uh, 2020, it said masks are essential as a uh, as a, uh, a disease fighting mechanism in may of 2021 they said well masks are not essential as long as you're vaccinated uh back in april of 2020 uh it was uh, the the, uh, the the ministry of truth or the uh, the government agency the uh, authoritarian agency which is uh being uh promoted by the ministry of truth said that it is not possible for you to test for uh for disease, unless that test has been provided, has been approved by us beforehand. In fact, I had to wait many, many months in order to get tested. Uh, and uh, the Ministry of Truth is, is now saying that uh, it used to say that outdoor transmission of uh, of of, uh, of uh, 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 COVID. No, you can't say that word. Oh, outside that. outside the, 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 transmission of oh, uh, Voldemort. Fluvid. Fluvid. Uh, Something. Outside, no, no. Outside transmission of uh, uh, particulate matter uh, was not uh, was a, was a huge conspiracy, a huge contributor to disease. Now the uh, Ministry of Truth is saying, "Oh no, it's not actually. It's only about one or two percent of uh, of the transmission." Mm. Uh, the whole the whole thing is we are listening to a Ministry of Truth say that you have to obey the authorities, and the authorities have on the record, been consistently wrong. Can we say that the Ministry of Truth is wrong? I, I don't think we can say that. Well, as long as we call it the Ministry no, of no, Truth. The Ministry of Truth, truth say. is saying you have to believe the government agency. Mm. And that's the, and, the, and the authoritarian government agency. They're always right, except they change their mind at every uh, opportunity. And I haven't even gotten into the, uh, the, uh, the prevalence of uh, how... Uh, the disease spreads or or doesn't, hmm. or how many will die from it? Or it's don't. hard. It's, it's hard to quote the Ministry of Truth when the Ministry of Truth changes their their sayings every three months. Mm -hmm. So now you can go get in trouble for something you said three months ago, which was perfectly acceptable, and now is not. <laughs> and, the ministry, and the Ministry of Truth has a platform which says, uh, unless you agree with our version of truth, you're off the platform. Hmm. Yeah, and it's a, it's, it's a growing problem. And the problem. reason the Ministry of Truth is doing this is because they know that the FANG stock, which depends upon government approval and government uh, lack of regulation, uh, is going to get regulated like hell unless the Ministry of Truth reflects what the government agencies are saying. It's a, uh, it's, it's a, it's a cluster F. It's a censorship by the back door, and just like the clock, we are out of time. Thank you all for watching. You can go to libertariancounterpoint.com to find out all about all our show prep. And please remember to love everybody.